So this young lady that's from diaspora decided to call out the foundational black Americans and say that we're a bit of colonizers. And I find that a very comical statement. Let's get into it. Sometimes I think about how a lot of black Americans can low-key be colonizers. You know how a lot of Americans like to be in the spotlight? They always want to be at the center of the story. A lot of black Americans are actually like that when it comes to African stories. What do you mean by that? How we try to be the center of attention? Let's see what she has to say. They're not interested in Africa unless they are the center of it. Good example is Woman King. There's also Black Panther, which had the backdrop of Africa, but they didn't even have a premiere event in at least 10 African countries. And now don't tell me about the one or two African actors in these movies because it's giving. I have a black friend. Didn't you just try to use a foundational black American woman's gesture, gesticulating like IBA sisters do? with the neck roll, that's not indicative of your culture. And it's funny that you mention the movies because two of our American icons, foundational black American icons, Harriet Tubman, <laughs> Cynthia Revo is not foundational black American, she's Nigerian by way of, uh, she's from London by way of Nigeria, and David Ayelowo. And I'm pretty sure I mentioned his last name, no offense, but he's also from London by way of Nigeria as well. So their lineage dates back to Nigeria, which means they have nothing in common with our struggle, yet they're playing our American icons. Hmm. Oh, in, in the movie Harriet, they had a fictional character named Bigger Long, which is a play on the fact that the black man has this big long penis as a bad guy coming together and she was saved by a white man. Anyway. Continue. Also seen a couple of black Americans traveling from America to African countries to have their hair done because it's cheap. It's giving cheap labor. Who else did that? You're still doing the head, the, like the, the head roll. Like what, what you doing the neck roll for? Why are you still doing that? That's not your culture. That's not your culture. And I, and I wonder, because the way you're talking, are you even in your own country? Are you even in Africa right now? Or you're here in the United States because you fled. But continue. There's also the passport pros who are like, oh my God, I should just go get a wife in Africa because <laughs> they're easier to oppress and they don't have rights. <laughs> what? What about all the African women that got half Asian babies? <laughs> Particularly Chinese because the Chinese men know that, hey, I can't own land because I'm not African, but I can leave my seed in these women. Dip for a few years, come back, get my sons, get my daughters and say, hey, that's how you need to think. And then own land by way of their children. Like, I don't even think you're on your continent. I don't think you're in the continent of Africa, let alone your country. But go off. And lately, there has been a huge number of black Americans doing a lot of investments in African countries, especially real estate. But the problem is, <laughs> they're coming and they want to change everything. They're like, yo, the architecture that you have in these African countries, not a vibe. We're just going to bring that American aesthetic. You're just gentrifying a lot of African countries, but you don't care about that, right? <laughs> as long as you get money in your pocket. <laughs> oh, ma'am. Ma'am, if y'all had it so popping, y'all wouldn't have fled. There's actually a new term, Nigerian, Joppa, to flee. It basically means to flee. Shout out to Professor Black Truth. Bold the clip. But even without the brilliant economic mind of Hush Puppy, Nigeria still has a problem with young people leaving in droves. This is the culture. You only live in Nigeria until you can find someone to help you illegally enter Europe or Asia or until you get a visa to Europe or the U.S. And then after that, you never even think about Nigeria again. It's a trend that even has its own name, Japa, which is Yoruba for to run or escape. So fleeing has become so popular over there, it even has its own word. Now, these tethers get mad that FBA over here talk about them fleeing, but we're just saying what their own young people have been saying. Japa is a playful Nigerian word that's trending in that West African country for all the wrong reasons. It's Yoruba for run away or escape, and many young Nigerians are doing just that in the thousands, leaving the country in search of a better life abroad. 
It was and still is a sort of comical expression, but it has also evolved into a more serious national talking point ahead of next month's elections, as NPR's Emmanuel Akinwotu reports from Lagos. Japa, a single word which sums up the desire that many young Nigerians have to leave their country. You discover there is a movement many of us who are youth here know, they call it Japa. People running out of the country just anyhow. Pastors preach about it, and it's discussed on radio shows. And let's talk about what's trending hmm. right now. What's trending right now, of course, we can't hide it. It's Jackpot, left, right, and center. The word even surfaces in song. Like this hit track by Afropop star Naira Mali. The word has evolved and has come to define the high number of people leaving Africa's largest economy. It's even an issue ahead of next month's presidential election. We cannot or Japa, let's fix Nigeria, is a campaign slogan for one of the leading candidates. Stop any young person on a street in Nigeria, like here in Lagos, and you'll find someone who either wants to Japa or knows someone who has. The trigger for this has been a crumbling economy and rising insecurity. Nearly half of young people are unemployed. And in a country where two thirds of the population are under 30, the impact can be felt across Nigerian life. We Nigerians are suffering a lot. And to be fat, to be sincere, we had a lot of problems in Nigeria. Taibat Rahim says she would leave if she could afford the ticket. There are no comprehensive figures for this latest Japa wave, but everyone in Nigeria has been affected by it. You have to think about why are all these people leaving? The answer is they don't see hope. Chioma Aguebo founded a women-focused tech company in Abuja. A few years ago, she noticed that one by one, her close friends were leaving Nigeria. Between 2020 and today, of my five friends, four left. You can't quantify the loss of community just from people leaving. It's the absence of hope. People are watching their savings just come to nothing. In this climate, online communities and influencers are becoming an important touch point for young Nigerians trying to leave. How can I apply for a U.S. visa? Go to the ustraveldocs.com slash ng. One popular influencer is 36-year-old Funke Ogunkoya Futi. Who's going to be running our hospitals, right? Who's going to be taking care of our healthcare if everyone's leaving? So it's actually, it's going to trickle down and start affecting everybody else in Nigeria. I'm hopeful that these people, in a way, acquire the skills they need. And maybe in 10 years, they come back. Chioma Aguebo finally left the country last year, like many of her friends did. It's almost like the ship is sinking and everyone's just like, how quickly can you get out? She says she never planned to leave, but it became inevitable. She wanted to stay and help build a future in her own country. But increasingly, she felt it was hard to see one. Emmanuel Akimotu, NPR News, Lagos. And this is why we delineate. And this is why we have the term tether. Now, let me update the files on tether. A tether is someone of an immigrant background who is trying to undermine foundation of black American society. They're coming over here, whether they're Latino, whether they're African, whether they're Caribbean, whether they're one of these others South, from South America, wherever they're from. They are an immigrant class trying to come and undermine what we got going on. You don't need reparations. You don't need tangibles. You don't need this. You guys just want to hug and hold hands and sing Kumbaya and, and everything's going to be all right. Those are tethers. So your file's been updated. You see why we're delineating. And shout out to the non-FBA riders who are B1 family. We ride with y'all, but y'all got to get y'all coons and round them up and, and do something with them. Because we we call out our coons. That's coonish. That's why we call them tethers. Peace and black empowerment.